yeah. what else is it is the is the purpose of a sports scientist do you think in a team sport like AFL? yeah yeah well i think i guess what you need one of the first considerations when you're whether you want to apply apply um new research or new processes within your program um i, I think it's always good to take a trip around the the research process um so i think if you remember back to it might be you might have, anyone might have come across it in high school science or if you in your undergraduate degree it, but you can even if you just look up this the scientific method you'll see there's a sort of this process where we start with a research question um we might look into what research or or, or what we know about the topic area develop a hypothesis test with an experiment analyze some data and then um i guess report those findings and then challenge ourselves with another question again so i think it's important that um you have a really solid purpose around what you want to do or, or what sort of research questions um, or question you want to answer. Are there any other papers or, or feel free to um, talk about your own work as well where you've, you've found that, that it's been quite practical in, in the approach and, and could be quite effective for, for practitioners listening in to apply to their trade? Yeah. Um, I guess one similar one in that grain that we had um, we came out about 2020, but we, we looked at, um, we did some sub-maximal testing over a couple of years when I was at the Dragons and, and, um, Nathan Pickworth, who was the performance manager there, he's now at the Sharks was, was involved in that as well. So, um, we did a, um, sub-maximal yo-yo, which is basically just the first four minutes of the yo-yo uh, quite a number of times over two years. And, and we basically found that, um, relative to their own individual, I guess, where we'd normally see them sort of sit. When players add higher training loads over a month, they typically tend to perform better at that submaximal performance test. And it, it, what's your sort of um, go-tos with the small sided games? Is it player load again, or heart rate, or um, yeah, distance per minute? What are your sort of favourites? Um, well, I think t from a performance point of view, I think well, Jace Delaney and Grant Duffy have done some good research around acceleration metrics and acceleration density so that for me like it's basically just average acceleration per second i think for me is probably one of the ones that gets missed a little bit and not used so much and i think that's probably a um a really important one um mm -hmm. meters I, I guess meters per minute i think is a is is one to look at it's typically um i think a good variable because players and coaches understand what meters are and you, they can have some ownership and some conversation around the conversation when they're um, and they can feel involved in it a bit more if they have an understanding of, of what the metric is. What are some of your sort of key metrics, whether it be in rugby or in AFL, for uh, developing resilient athletes as their sort of non negotiable yeah. target yeah. that you have for individual athletes? And talk us through you know, the data you sort of yeah. reference, whether it be their games um, that they play. Yeah. Position they yeah, play yeah, yeah. Play. yeah. 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 Good question. I think the two things are. The two things are obviously volume and intensity. I think volume is usually the thing that's done a bit easier and, and really well. Like if we can go out there and, you know, we want to do a 12, 13, 14 K session and we can, you know, we're wearing GPS units, so we can definitely, we know when that's going to happen. Um, probably the little bit more challenging thing around that regard is getting it in a certain amount of time or with a particular intensity. And that can definitely be, di it's difficult to replicate training intensity maybe when you've got, your i guess first team versus second team comparing to the intensity that you might get when you've got you know you're playing in a prelim final or a semi-final like in terms of uh, a sports scientist uh, maybe someone who's going into either a, a semi-professional club for the first time as a sports scientist or someone's going into a um an elite sport for the first time where do you think you can make your biggest impact if, you, if you're thinking you're going to be at that club for a few years and as you mentioned yeah. it can be gradual and that's probably the way to go in terms of building your yeah. relationships but also yeah. putting you not changing too much too quickly. But um, yeah. yeah, where do you think you can make your biggest impact uh, as a sports scientist? Yeah, for, yeah, good question. Yeah, um, I guess the common answer is you know we want that the goal is to achieve optimal performance. But then that brings another question about so how do you go about doing that or what is optimal? But I think as a starting point, the the things I just mentioned around training standards. Uh, so I think if you can if you can set some objective criteria even before you start say the first training session of the preseason, but be able to set out some some goals and some standards around what you think training should look like before you've even started 